Welcome to episode 17 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I want to show you how to download and use Flux LoRa models in your workflow along with the best settings and nodes so you can create even more cool stuff like these images from detailed anime illustrations to vintage and fantasy themes, including LoRa that helps speed up the generation. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. It's a clever technique used in AI image generation models like Stable Diffusion to make them more versatile without needing to retrain the whole model from scratch. Imagine you have a huge fancy recipe book, the base model, that contains recipes for making all kinds of dishes. Instead of writing a whole new book just for one particular dish or type of cuisine, Laura lets you create a small note that tells you how to modify the recipes to make, for example, a special kind of cake, a face, character, or style. You don't rewrite the whole book, you just add a little sticky note with the necessary tweaks to create that new dish. Since Laura doesn't contain the full recipe, the entire model, it only has those small adjustments. Therefore, it needs to be applied to the same base model that it was um, originally trained on. Using another model is like trying to stick your cake recipe note into a sushi cookbook. It won't make sense because the base ingredients or model data are different. You can train a LoRa model using a base model and images, but that is more advanced and I will not discuss it in this episode. LoRa's can be used to fine tune many different things. One type can be a character LoRa. Think of this as teaching the model how to generate a specific person like a famous celebrity or an anime character. This LoRa focuses on making the model output images of that person with the right features and details. Another type is a style LoRa. This is like putting a filter or artistic style over your generated images. For example, you could apply a LoRa that makes everything look like it was painted in the style of Van Gogh or like it's part of a comic book. It fine tunes the overall vibe of the image. Then there's the object LoRa. Sometimes you want to add specific objects or concepts to the model's knowledge like spaceships, your own product, or uh, fantasy weapons. This adds new things the model can generate, kind of like giving the model a new tool or ingredient to work with. Lastly, there's one more type of LoRa. I'm not sure how to call it, maybe modifier LoRa or functional LoRa uh, that helps the model act differently. For example, I will show you a LoRa that lets you use fewer steps so you can generate images faster. Enough with theory, let's practice. First of all, make sure to go to the manager and update all. After that, it will ask you to restart. Uh, I already updated it earlier. Now, from this episode forward, I will use the new menu interface. So go to settings, then scroll down until you find uh, the menu. By default, it is disabled. So I will choose to place it on top and now have this new interface. The manager is where the puzzle icon and button are located. You can move this area that has the Q button on it you have some menus on top like workflow, which lets you load or save a workflow and edit, which lets you undo or clear the workflow. Let's go to workflow and open an existing workflow. I will open a flux dev workflow from episode 10. You can get it from discord if you don't have it already. My favorite flux model is flux dev Q eight. If you press Q, it will start to run this workflow and you can cancel at any time using the cancel button that looks uh, like an X icon. You can also zoom in and out or use the mouse wheel. You can reset the, the view and use pan mode. Once you have a running workflow, you can also turn off link visibility if it's too distracting um, for you. Um, I've kind of gotten used to links being visible to see where each is going. I imagine it as a futuristic interface connected with cables. On the left, you also have the queue where you can see previously generated images, the node library that lets you search and drag nodes to the canvas, the models library where you can see all kinds of models. You have downloaded workflows where you can see your workflows and the nodes map from where you can bypass certain nodes. Um, you can toggle the theme color 
or you can go to settings and deactivate it if you don't like it. Okay, let me show you how LoRa works. I will make some room here for a new node. Double click on the canvas, search for load uh, LoRa, and you can use this node to load your LoRa and connect it to the workflow. However, I like to use a custom node that offers way more options. Um, search for power LoRa loader. This is part of the RG3 node pack. You should have this node if you followed all the tutorials. If not, go to custom nodes in the manager, search for RG3 and install it from there. Now this node will come just after the node that loads the model. Remember when we said it's like a sticker on a cookbook. Right now, the model is connected to the case sampler node. And what we want is to insert this LoRa into that workflow. So from the node that loads the model, we connect it to this LoRa loader and then we connect it to the case sampler. Now it takes into account that sticky note where we tell it what to change. We also have some clip inputs. So from the dual clip loader, it goes to LoRa and from LoRa, it goes to both the positive and negative prompts. So we successfully inserted our LoRa into the workflow. You can change it to another color if you want. Okay, now it's time to get some LoRa's. There are different websites from where you can download them. One is Civit AI. If you go to models and filter, you can choose the model type to be LoRa and then the base model. Um, remember when I told you it needs to be the same base model, we are using Flux Dev. So we look for Flux D. Here are all the models from that category. If you click on one, you can see more info like the type, uh, which is LoRa, the base model. And it's always uh, important to check to make sure it's the same as your model. Then there are trigger words, which are also very important. The trigger word is like a special ingredient written on that sticky note that activates the changes. For instance, the note might say, add cinnamon for a spicy twist. The trigger word here is cinnamon. If you don't mention it, the recipe stays normal. But once you use the trigger word cinnamon, the dish takes on that specific flavor. From here, you can download it. Another website is Shaker. Here on the right, you have a filter that lets you select Laura as the model type. Choose the base model, which is Flux in our case. If you click on one, you can see that some of the models don't allow you to use the, the generated images for commercial work. But if we go back to our filter, we can select to generate only images that we can use for commercial work. So in theory, you can use this for commercial work. As you can see here, that doesn't mean you can uh, generate a Frankenstein monster and sell it. You still need to create images that respect copyrights and trademarks. Uh, in general, if you don't prompt for copyrighted materials, it should be okay. Just like on Civit, you can also see the model type, the trigger words, and you, know, you can download the model. Now, for all the, with the downloaded LoRa models, you need to place them in one folder. Go to your models folder, then to the LoRa folder. Uh, here, you need to place all your models. Um, to make it easier, I recommend creating a folder for each base model. For example, you can create a Flux folder and place all the Flux lores there to make sure you don't mix them with SDXL or other model types. Another website where you can find LoRa, but it's a little harder since it's not as well organized, is Hugging Face. I will give you all the links for the LoRa I use in this video. This LoRa is really nice for anime illustrations and is quite popular on Instagram right now. You can read more about this LoRa here. And if you go to the files and versions tab, you can find the model, click on the download button and place it in your LoRa folder or in the Flux subfolder like I did here. Um, always give it a meaningful name or you can name it the same as the trigger words. If your comfy UI was open, make sure you click on the refresh button so you can actually see the model in the list. Uh, click on add LoRa and you can select one from the list or search for it. You can see that those in the Flux folder are easy to find here since they have 
flux in front. There is even an easier way. If you right click on the canvas and go to RG3 node settings, you have this setting called auto nest subdirectory and menu. So you can activate it if you have a lot of LORAS. Right now, I don't have over 20. So I will set a smaller number like two so you can see the effect. Then click save. Now, when I click add LoRa, you can see those subfolders. I have the flux folder and you can see all the models inside. So it can be quite useful to organize them this way. Let's add the last LoRa we downloaded. Once you add it, it appears here in the list. You can increase or decrease the strength of this LoRa. Just don't go too high. Usually values of one and under one are preferred depending on the LoRa. You can turn it on or off from here. If it's off, it will not use the LoRa. If you right click on it, you can remove it. Uh, now let's add it again. And if you look on the page from where we downloaded it, we have these words as trigger words. Uh, you can copy those and you need to put those trigger words in the prompt. I usually just put them first at the beginning and then I add my normal prompt afterward. Uh, when you run the workflow, it will load the model and then the extra information in the LoRa model. Um, the first time will be slow depending on the model size. Then it gets the trigger words and the prompts. And at the end, we get this beautiful detailed uh, illustration. Um, quite cool, isn't it? If you are wondering how it will look without the LoRa active, you can turn it off. And this is how it looks, a typical flux image. Let's turn it back on. And one cool thing uh, this note has is that if you right click on the LoRa, you have this option to show info that will show you more information. You can see here we have trained words. This is, it is only one, but some have more. So you don't have to remember all the trigger words. You can come here, click on a word, and then click copy to copy that trigger word, which you can then paste in the prompt. Alternatively, you can create a note node and add all your trigger words there. Another interesting lore is this 70s sci-fi style from Civit AI. You can see the base model and here is the trigger word. Download it and place it in the same folder with the rest. You can load it here directly to replace it or remove it and add the other one. I will click on show info. You can see it has a lot of words here. So which one do you use? Usually the first ones are more popular, so you can select one or more. Since it's on Civit AI, you can click on the button that says fetch info from Civit AI, and that will load all the information you need from Civit AI. You can see now the first one has a Civit AI logo, so that is the best trigger word you can use. Click on it, click copy, and let's paste it in our positive prompt field. Uh, now we can add our prompt after that word. If I run it, I get something like this. Uh, you can play around with the lower strength. I like to reduce most of them to 0 0.8, so uh, it has more creativity while still getting the LoRa style. You can reduce it even more to get a mix of both worlds. Um, another cool LoRa is this fantasy LoRa from Shaker. Check the type, the base model, and the trigger word. You can see the recommended setting is 0 0.8 for weight. Download that model, refresh Comfy UI, and load it with the Power LoRa loader node. Change the strength and show info. It seems this one was available on Civit AI as well, not only on Shaker. So we can see the best word to use is fantasy, but you can combine it with other words too. I will leave the same prompts and just change the trigger word. This time, the result is different for this LoRa. We get this fantasy style. Here's another Laura called Sketchy Pastel Anime. Another lore I found on Hugging Face is this sticker, Laura. Uh, you can find the trigger words here. 
from the files and versions, you can download it and add it to the same folder with the rest. Uh, let's load it and add the trigger words in the prompt. The style is different, but it doesn't look like a sticker because I added in the prompt what the background is like in a cave. Uh, let's try one without the environment. Let me try another simple prompt like a cute cat with a hat. This one looks like a nice sticker. Um, now let's try this one called Ultra Realistic um, Laura. This one has more trigger words, so you can combine them or use the first one. Here you have some recommended settings. Um, I'm adding that one, fetching the info from Civit, and then copying uh, uh, and pasting the trigger word in the prompt. Then I add my own prompt. Um, they said to reduce the flux guidance and increase the steps. I got this realistic looking vintage photo. It's a little blurry, but probably the photos it was trained on weren't so clear. Um, not sure, but it still looks realistic. Let's see how it will look with an astronaut photo. Yeah, it, it kind of looks real with all those imperfections. Just keep in mind that some larger Laras can take more time to load. In this case, it took almost a minute while without Laura, it takes me 15 seconds. With a different Laura that was smaller, it took 25 seconds. So keep that in mind. You can see here how big each one is on my drive. The last Laura is this one called Turbo Alpha, which lets you speed up your generations by reducing the number of steps needed to only eight steps. Uh, this allows you to generate faster, but it does lose a little quality from the files and versions, download it and give it a name. Then all you have to do is load it. It doesn't need any trigger words, so you can put your normal prompt here and I will change the steps to eight. This is the result. The first time took longer, but the second time is faster. As you can see, it only took 10 seconds to generate an image with Flux Dev Q8. Let's try another prompt. Uh, for those who don't have enough VRAM, it can be worth a try. However, for me, it's worth waiting five seconds more for extra quality. You can also combine multiple Loras. I will load three Loras, one for fantasy, one for 70 sci-fi, and one for anime style. I will add all the trigger words in the prompt for each Laura. I set the steps again to 20 or 30, and, and this is the result. Not bad, but for some Loras, the image can look overcooked because there are too many things happening at once. So I like to split the strength between them. If I have uh, two, I will use 0 0.5 for one and 0 0.5 for the other. If I have three, I can split it among all three. As you can see, uh, this is the result. It has a mix of all three Loris. You can give more power to the one you want to be more important. So if I want the 70s sci-fi style to be more prominent, I add to that and split the difference with the rest. Just keep in mind that using multiple Loris will also slow down the generation. So this cute illustration is the result. If I want a more anime looking uh, image, I can change the percentage to give more power to the anime Laura. And I get something like this. Let me load another workflow. These will be available for free on Discord in the Pixaroma workflows channel. So instead of using Laura with the text to image workflow, let's try using it with an image to image workflow. I will use that anime Laura along with the trigger word and the prompt. Then I'll load this portrait of a woman. Um, the denoise is set to 0.75 and I get this image that is half photo and half almost like a realistic anime. I can play with the denoise. If I increase the value, the image will be more anime style and less similar to the original photo as you can see here. Let's try a different Laura, maybe the 70s sci-fi style. I'll adjust the, the trigger words and the prompt, and I got a girl instead because it took the prompt literally. So let's change girl to woman and try again. We can increase the denoise to see what we can get, and let's increase it even more. Since this Laura works great with illustrations, let's uh, enhance the prompt with some more words related to that, like digital painting. Uh, you can see how different prompts changed everything. 
That's why it's important to play around with denoise and Laura strength to find the right balance. Right now, to make it more similar to my image, I need to reduce the denoise. It looks more similar, but I want that um, illustration style back, so then I'll increase the denoise a little again. Now, um, this is the result I was looking for. Uh, so uh, play around and find what version works best for you. Check the Discord. The server is growing fast and we have more channels. There's a channel for frequently asked questions where you can see what each channel is for and other useful answers. Each day, check the daily challenge and you can post your entry in that channel. If you can't see all the channels, make sure you have enabled show all channels. I also added a channel for Comfy UI frequently asked questions that will grow over time with more answers. Don't forget about the workflows for each episode. The workflows start with episode three, so you can search for it. Just make sure to add that zero in front of three between episode three and nine, and then use normal numbers like 13 so you can jump to that workflow quickly. To support this channel, you can join the membership, which will give you access to private channels. Thank you, Legends, for your continuous support. A special mention to the king of all legends, Sebent. You are amazing. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you found this video helpful. Have a great day. See you on Discord.